finally out at the range today. I'm shooting this FNX 9mm. Uh, working up the load with those Lehigh Extreme Penetrators. I'm going to shoot a baseline though using my 115 grain Hornady XTPs. Then I'm going to shoot the Lehigh 115 grain. And then I'm going to repeat that process as I step up the powder charge. I'm going to do three rounds of each. So three rounds at five grains with the XTP, three rounds at 5.0 grains of unique with the Lehigh, and 5.2 grains, and finally 5.4, assuming we don't see any pressure problems. So let's go ahead and get started and give this a try. Eleven hundred thirty-nine. Now these are the Lehigh's. How's it look? Uh, the same. Huh? Same. Good, excellent. Okay? Now three rounds with the Hornady XTPs with 5.2 grains of Unique. Oh, that's pretty new and nice. Now 5.2 grains of unique behind the 115 grain Lehigh's. Everything's going fine so far. Notice they're about 20 feet per second faster. And that's simply because of the intrusion of this round or this bullet into the case, raising pressures and raising velocities. That's a fast one, 12 12. How's that primer look? Okay. Eleven ninety six. Five point four grains of unique Hornady XTPs. Last round, four rounds with the Hornady XTPs. Last bunch, three rounds with those Lehigh bullets and 5.4 grains of, uh, of Unique. Now we saw in that last one that one of those primers flattened out just a little bit. You kinda gotta study it to notice it. Um, now these Lehigh's are, have been giving us a little bit higher velocities so I may stop shooting it if we're getting flattened primers. That's an early indicator of pressures going up. 5.2 grains looks good. We'll see how 5.4 grains uh, looks on these Lehigh Extreme Penetrators. Felt good here. That was 12.08. Twelve twenty eight. 
and 12, 12. Not doing too bad. The gun felt just fine, not acting odd at all. And what are we looking like for primers? Fine. All fine? Very good. Okay, these are all the primers. This is the five grains of unique XDPs and then the Lehigh's. Five point two grains XDP and the Lehigh. You can always tell those Lehigh's because I use the Sig Sauer brass and I use Remington Peters for the XDPs. Everything looks good here. Then we're looking once again at the XTPs and the uh, Lehigh's here. Actually they all look nice. I'm going to study the velocities and then choose what powder charge I'm going to use in the future. Now this was a very interesting time out at the range. It was kind of on the cold side in the 20 degrees as you might have imagined or might have guessed, but even more importantly of course are the results of our load workup. First and foremost everything shot very fine, very safely, so that's a big plus. But now, of course, we need to make a decision of what powder charge to use in these rounds in the future. You know, when we're working up rifle uh, ammo, we watch for what we call the optimal charge weight. And there's really no difference, certainly as applicable to pistol rounds as well. And what that means is that the muzzle velocities between two different charges is essentially the same. We look for what's called the sill or the flattening out of, of uh, muzzle velocity if we graph it on an XY scatter plot. In this case, we saw pretty consistent increases in muzzle velocity between each of the charges. And in fact, the XTP bullets showed a very predictable pattern of muzzle velocity increases along with or as a function of powder charge. So I might be very apt to select a 5.4 grain charge of unique behind the Hornady XTP as all three of those rounds had almost identical or very very similar muzzle velocity. So that's a really good trait. However, I noticed that while one or two of those primers showed just a little bit of flattening. I mean, you really had to study it, though. What we also saw, what I also saw, is um, a, a bit of a wedge cut into the rim of those 9mm Remington Peters cases that I haven't seen anywhere before with these loads or with the Remington Peters factory loads, uh, especially out of this FNX pistol. There's still the nice recess in the edges here, but I took a closer look at these cases. One of the things I noticed is you see that wedge shade there. That occurred on three of the four rounds firing 5.4 grains of unique with the XTP bullets. So now I want to take a closer look at the slide. And this is very interesting because that is the extractor. And notice that identical wedge shape there. So what is happening is that round it's getting some high pressures and it is expanding quite a bit inside the chamber and when this extractor or this receiver slide starts to pull backwards what it's doing is this extractor making firm contact with the case but the case doesn't want to quite come out of the barrel so it makes that indentation in it and ultimately it does jar out of the barrel and uh, out of the chamber and it ejects. Uh, any more pressure and it probably would rip through 
the um, the case head or the rim there and be a failure to extract. And that is an early indicator of excessive pressure. Well that takes care of the Hornady XTP but the focus of this video series is not the XTP but rather our extreme bullet from Lehigh Defense. So let's take a closer look at its results. Let's start by looking at the pressure problems or rather lack of pressure problems. Now this is one of those interesting things because as we saw the 115 grain Lehigh Extreme Penetrator is a much longer bullet which obviously then has much more intrusion into the case relative to the XTP. Yet we saw some early signs of excessive pressure in the XTP at 5.4 grains of unique but didn't see it with the Lehigh Defense. Now the best way that I can explain this is that it is either due to the difference in the brass remember we were using Remington Peters brass with the XDP and Sig Sauer brass for the uh, Lehigh's. So it's possible that the Sig Sauer brass had a larger case capacity to begin with overall maybe a little bit harder or tougher brass overall I'm not sure. Secondly it could be a difference in how those bullets were seeded and crimped. Recall I'm using the Hornady bullet seeding die with a taper crimp for the XTPs and the RCBS taper crimp bullet seeding die for the Lehigh's. And as I was seeding those bullets I actually prefer using the RCBS die. It just seemed that it was uh, seeding a little bit smoother uh, RCBS dies do not have that sleeve that uh, the Hornady dies do, which actually seem to make seeding the Lehigh bullets a little bit easier. That could be just personal preference, of course. Having observed those early pressure signs, though, gives me all the more cause to think that I should be loading the Lehigh's with 5.2 grains as well. Secondly, let's look at the range or variability in muzzle velocities with these Lehigh bullets. In all instances we had more variability with these bullets than we did with the uh, XTPs. However the lowest variability was seen with the 5.2 grain powder charge. Yet another reason to go with that charge. Now as these powder charges increased we see corresponding increases in muzzle velocity is exactly as expected. But we don't see quite the level of consistency that we did with the XTPs. For example, the R squared value is about 0.74 for these Lehigh bullets, which tells us that 74% of the variability seen in muzzle velocities can be explained by the difference in powder charge. We saw a much higher R squared value with the XTP bullet and that is another point of interest with this load. Now the final point of interest that I want to talk about is for those of you who watched our previous episode we noted that the Lehigh Defense bullet was intended to be a subsonic bullet and all the loads given in that recipe provided by Lehigh were indeed subsonic. However, every one of the loads, even the starting charge of 5.0 grains of unique, put us over that supersonic line. And every one of them is shooting supersonic or above the speed of sound. I'm not concerned with that, however, and in fact, I think it'll be an advantage for this bullet to be traveling at supersonic speeds. Let me explain. There's been a great debate over decades about whether the 45 ACP or the 9 millimeter Luger is the ideal um, defense cartridge. And those arguments are really very separated 
type of arguments, almost mutually exclusive. The 45 ACP is a heavy bullet. It's got a lot of mass behind it. 230 grains is kind of the norm, and it's traveling kind of slow, 900, 950 feet per second out of the muzzle. So its power and performance is in the fact that it packs a punch. The 9mm Luger, on the other hand, shoots a 115 grain bullet in the norm, which is exactly half the weight of that 45 ACP, but it normally does it at supersonic speeds. And as we start thinking about terminal ballistics later on in this season, we'll talk more about the effect of a bullet traveling at supersonic speed and the difference in its wound channel in contrast to bullets traveling below the speed of sound. But we'll talk about that a lot more later on in this season of Extreme Reloading. Now I've built my case to go with a 5.2 grain charge of Unique for these 115 grain bullets by Lehigh Defense. But of course only time will tell. Now stick around for our next episode. We're going to have an awful lot of range time. We're going to be comparing those Lehigh Extreme Penetrators, again, to the Hornady XTPs in three different 9mm pistols. We're going to bring back my FNX, as well as my CZ-75B and Beretta M9. Now the Beretta M9 is kind of nostalgic for me because when I was in the military, I was initially uh, issued a 1911 45 ACP pistol. And I could never qualify expert with that thing, and I really wanted that expert badge. A matter of about a year before I had gotten out of the, out of the military, we were issued those brand new, and we were taking these things out of the boxes, brand new. Beretta M9s in those days, and I had the opportunity to qualify with the Beretta M9. And let me tell you, I got my expert badge, and it was such a fun gun to shoot. And so I had to get my own M9 after getting out of the military. And so we're going to bring that M9 out to the range as well to shoot these different um, rounds and see number one which round performs better and which gun shoots the best. Going to be quite a bit of fun out at the range next time and I hope you join us. Thanks for watching this episode of Extreme Reloading.